What's up, y'all? It's been a hot minute. I know y'all are probably like, what are you doing? Where you been? If you follow me on IG and Snap, which why the f are you not? Add me right now. Follow me right now. I made an announcement that Jaw the Cup is taking a quick break, but we are going to be in preparation for season two very soon. So if there's any Jaw the Cup episodes that you really, really enjoyed, please let us know in the comments below which ones were your favorite. If you haven't, please go listen to the last episode that we had with Ross Seuss, which was about positivity is not the answer, which you can get to know more about that intriguing title once you listen to the episode. So for the past year, Jaw the Cup has been a podcast, which you can listen to on any podcast platform and it's been dope because we've been releasing episodes bi-weekly which all of you or most of you should know by now and we've been releasing video episodes monthly i know the last episode that we released was with jasmine sandalis dj reka and monthly tour which you can watch right here i would love to know who you would like to see on jada cup with k ray please let us know in the comments below who was your favorite guest mm, i want to know maybe we'll bring them back for season two you never know that's what happens here in jada cup what topics would you like us to talk about what would you like my opinion on because i have a lot of opinions all the freaking time so find out what i think about you or your mom that's what we're here for this is a very special episode of child the cup with k ray i have my mama g my uncle coming in for the first time his name is pradeep singh nagra he's a historian he's a humanitarian he's an athlete and he's an advocate and we're gonna get to hear about his film coming out that's based on his life i'm so excited for you guys to see and hear about him and not gonna waste any more time talking about me so let's just make this happen without further ado welcome the one the only for deep sink Nagra. Where is he? For deep sink Nagra. <laughs> he actually made me do this jaw the cup while we're on break <laughs> sponsored by the tiger movie who is featuring this man right here okay well he's not acting in it it's about him which is actually a little bit cooler than you know it being the person that plays him but i just want you to talk about that a little bit everyone knows you as pradeep singh naga i know you as beat mama so <laughs> well i don't think it's about me necessarily uh, i'm excited that we have an opportunity to watch a hollywood made film that has a leading character who's a sikh mm -hmm. and be played by a sick and, mm -hmm. and i think you being in the industry and having friends and colleagues in the industry and stuff you know how difficult it is i've seen some of your recent posts mm -hmm. as well when you're when you're talking about they're they're pretty much kind of marginalizing you guys because they're just looking at you as an ethnic person not as a canadian yeah and you know i i've been sharing with some people lately as i've been doing some interviews uh, regarding tiger and i've been sharing the story that there's not a single role on tv or a, in in the movie that we can't play as an american or as a canadian or mm -hmm. as, as a british person mm -hmm. i said just name any role you have something around doctors we're doctors you have something around uh, law and order we're police officers and we're lawyers and stuff like that you want just an everyday family or, or a child or a mother or a father that's what we are and so there's absolutely no role that's not applicable to people who look like us mm -hmm. right this movie is bigger than me uh, that's the way I see it as a responsibility and it happens and we're having fun because we're talking about tiger and it's based on my life story as a mm -hmm. boxer and stuff like that and so <laughs> that's kind of cool and interesting and neat but we know that the work that we've always done and the things that we advocate for mm -hmm. is is much bigger than just uh, us as individuals mm -hmm. or what we've achieved because we always want to move people along or open doors or take first steps where other people can follow along and I hope that that's how the community and the wider community sees this movie we've already won some great accolades uh, mm -hmm. we're in a number of film festivals yes. uh, in the US and we actually won best feature film at the San Diego International Film Festival yeah we can clap for that uh, for everybody involved <laughs> and then also the very first review that we've got from Hollywood North magazine mm -hmm. a very prominent magazine that speaks to uh, Canadian in cinema has uh, given us a nine and a half out of ten wow. and if you actually read the review the gentleman who wrote it said you watch a lot of different boxing movies and stuff like that but none uh, that spoke to him in terms of my story I, I think that's what it's about at the end of the day I want people to connect with the character and the rest of my identity is secondary because that's just part of who I am and right. and and what they'll experience in the movie and so it's really a celebration of us coming on stage in Hollywood and, and I think that's probably the key message yeah we're going to Hollywood baby <laughs> 
Malton to Hollywood. Malton to Hollywood. That's what it's about. To the left, two-two. The American Boxing Commission. They don't want you to fight. The fundamental tenets of his faith is to eschew the cutting of his hair. I was born in this country. I don't get it. They call you the Banja Tiger. You're changing the world. You also are the executive director for the Sikh Heritage Museum of Canada, and I know you have plenty of documents and artifacts that speak to Sikh history in the diaspora, so specifically to Sikh Canadians. I mean, I'm lucky enough to see all the work that you've done over the past few years, but just seeing your journey and like how passionate you've become and how you've taken this literally worldwide to share these stories that we never would learn in school. Mm -hmm. Why was it important to you to share that with everyone? What was the first artifact? fact or document that you might have come across that really sparked your passion? Well, you know, there's a good and bad to this story because the good is that something did spark me. The mm -hmm. bad was when did it come? It came after my complete education. Right. Never once growing up here in Canada from kindergarten right through even university and getting a degree and considering myself educated, mm -hmm. uh, did I ever see any image of somebody who looks like us as part of Canadian history. Mm -hmm. uh, never seen an image of anybody who looks like us who uh, contributed towards the war efforts. And, you know, we just commemorated the 100th anniversary of World War One. And what many Canadians don't know, or many people around the world don't know, is that people who look like us, we actually entered the war in September of 1914. And mm -hmm. that's before Canada as a country entered in 1915, right, their right. CEF. Right, right, right. And so these are important things when Remembrance Day comes around and we're looking at the poppy and stuff like that, to know that what our contributions were. And we fought not only for British India, we fought for Canada as well and Australia and stuff. And equally, as, as both uh, the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, had come to the Sikh Heritage Museum, and they recognized themselves that we're not sharing uh, Sikh history or culture in the museum we're sharing Canadian history mm -hmm. through a sick lens right and that's an important narrative and the the piece and the time that triggered this was in 1997 yeah. I attended an event with the Centennial Foundation and for the first time I seen pictures of people who looked like me Canadians Sikhs as early as 1900s mm -hmm. here in Canada on the lumber mills uh, on, working on the railroads in the cement quarries and wow. stuff and I was shocked I was angry I was sad I was happy I was frustrated why didn't I learn this stuff why didn't I know this stuff? And that I would never let a day pass again where I'm not engaging this type of history and heritage uh, mm -hmm. amongst not only in Canada, but the diaspora. Those are all things that continue to spark this phenomenal interest to say, listen, we need to be caretakers of our history. Mm -hmm. And the collecting part came in because we need to be caretakers of our history and our artifacts. We can't be dependent on the ROM or the Canadian War Museum yep. be holding our artifacts because then we're dependent on them to even have access to our own artifacts. Right. The next narrative after that is about storytelling. Mm -hmm. And storytelling is important too because one of two things is going to happen. Either a story is never going to be told or mm -hmm. it's going to be told through somebody else's lens. Yes. And we have to be able to be our own storytellers, yeah. right? And then it's about creating resources bigger than the objects. It's about having a permanent place where you can actually see these artifacts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can actually touch some of them. And then finally, the last piece is about to empower. And so people like who come to the museum and family like you who get inspired when they're seeing this kind of work and having access to this information really makes it grow. And then you become the historian. Historians, right. and you become the caretakers and the next generation will continue that journey mm. uh, we also have a Facebook page you don't need to be on Facebook because you know I have no social Ooh. media and you know like I don't even have a data plan on my phone <laughs> yeah. right so you know how I kind of he run just and work switched. right he just switched from a flip phone to like a smartphone do you have a, yeah I don't know how smart it is but it's a different <laughs> phone than the flip phone I just use it for like I said to, to call or possible text once in a while right well thanks Thanks, Bimo, for doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna hug you because that was really nice. <laughs> Shout outs to our great 10 Civics book. If you have it at home, look through the pages because you'll see his photo there. <laughs> and that is such a huge deal because I think especially when we look at our history, I look at our school curriculums. I mean, you work in the Toronto School District School Board as yeah. well. And I think just having someone like your voice in that industry is so important. You've mentioned that your first fight was outside of the ring uh, to challenge the rules and regulations. What was the journey like? So were you already a boxer? Were you already training as a boxer? Well, what's interesting is I grew up playing a lot of sports and a lot of competitive sports. I was actually healing a soccer injury. Mm -hmm. And I had just signed up with Peel Regional Police and was accepted as auxiliary constable and was in training. And so that's what got me into the boxing gym. And naturally, when, you know, out of the corner of your eye, you see that boxing ring right over there, you know that you're going to try getting in there one day and box, right? Like, right. you just can't be hanging out there saying, okay, I'm going to avoid that ring or something <laughs> like that, right? And then one day somebody came up to me and they said, hey, you know what? You're going to have to shave that. And I knew exactly what they're talking about when, they're, when, when they 
pointed towards me and I asked my coach, do I, I go, uh, any rules against it? And we checked and the rule book, it said, mustache is loud, must be trimmed, sideburns loud, must be trimmed, no beards. Mm. And then uh, I said, well, I guess my first fight's gonna be outside the ring. So then I had to approach Boxing Canada uh, to table a motion at their annual general meeting, put a motion on the floor to vote on it to see if they're allowed beards. And they defeated the motion nine to six. Wow. And I was actually happy and you're saying, mm. wow, but I was actually a little bit excited mm. internally in the sense that I got a small window and a crack here because it could have been 15 nothing. Right. Then I had to go back and file an Ontario human rights complaint against Boxing Ontario. Mm. And we resolved that and I started competing and the first tournament I entered was the Provincial Novice Championships and I won that. And then I eventually was representing Ontario at the National Championships in 1999, which is the Olympic Qualification Tournament for Sydney Olympics. Right. And lo and behold, I get to the National Championships and this is when it gets crazy. They already had spread rumors that they were not going to let me box possibly. And so I get there, I go to weigh in and they wouldn't let me weigh in. And I said, well, what's the problem? And they said, your beard. And I said, what's my beard have to do with weight? So I was disqualified. But my lawyers wow. were in court in Toronto and they actually went to court to be heard on a day they were not even on schedule, to be heard right away, to be heard without the other side present. So they're arguing a case without the other side present. Wow. And they want a decision. Mm. And because I was already now disqualified and I had three hours for weigh-in, we got the decision and we got the injunction mm -hmm. to allow me to compete. Mm -hmm. We go back down to weigh-in, they told me to wait, and all of a sudden the time passed for weigh-ins and it kept going and I was just sitting by myself. Eventually they called me into a room and they said, we're canceling the whole weight class. Wow. So then they decided to cancel the whole weight class instead yeah. of allowing me to compete and stuff. And then it just got crazy because uh, it became international news. Is Canada going to be fielding a weight class in the competition leading up to Olympics and stuff? There was just high energy in the community, not positive. Mm. My life ended up getting threatening. Somebody had put a picture of me and defaced it right when you enter the boxing venue. And then we eventually had to go back to court again because now we're that was an injunction just for the national championships. And we're looking to finally get those rules changed. And we did that. And so then the rule became open right across Canada. And believe it or not, as we speak right now, just about five months ago, I helped get England get their rules changed back to allow boxers to That's box with awesome. a beard. And as we speak right now in November, the beard issue is being tabled by the International Amateur Boxing Association at their cabinet meeting. Mm. Um, so this can be an interesting month for me with the Tiger movie coming out and maybe getting that international decision, which mm. is now almost 18 years removed that we're still working on. Yeah. Um, so it can be a double win uh, if it all comes shit, out, that's right? Crazy. So it's crazy. Watch your language. Watch your language. I was thinking today, I'm not allowed to swear on today's job because I'm so stressed out. And I swore. I even picked that one off. I was like, my mom was on this. I can't swear. Yeah. But that was good because it's honest, right? And it's natural enough that I picked it off as well. So so we both we both win on it. You got to almost swear a little bit, I and I did. did it. Yeah. Anyway. Even when I was looking at other um, cases, the ban being in whether in the US or with FIFA, International Basketball Federation, just like all these other athletes that were also are still dealing with this yeah. 18, 19 years after. And all of them have no grounds. No. This is the funny irony. Because like, so for example, if you're talking about just the putka and soccer yeah. and stuff like that, do you ever watch professional soccer leagues, whether it's England mm -hmm. or in Europe and stuff like that? And you got goalies with these big soft pieces on their cream because if yeah. they had a head injury or whatever, yeah. and different soccer players tying up things because they have long hair and stuff yeah. like that. And so same thing with my beard. You know, one of the things, even to this date, which shocks me, like completely shocks me is even like, cause you know, the trailer's on and stuff yeah. and there's a lot of racism and visceral comments coming out that hey just shave and you know it's a rule stuff and i'm laughing buddy do you even check to know first of all every single contact sport and mixed martial arts sport allows beards right. so wrestling allows it yeah, <laughs> kickboxing allows yeah. it even boxing professional boxing allows yeah. it because when we fought our case we showed lennox lewis fighting with the beard and stuff yeah and forget about then look at right now mcgregor, uh, McGregor yeah. and mayweather and yeah. mcgregor's not even a seek okay and, he, and his beard is bigger than mine yeah. mcgregor's beard is bigger than yeah, mine he's not yeah. even a seek right yeah. <laughs> and and so it's only in this amateur boxing because then even in mma with with even stuff like that mm. it's only this amateur boxing and the origins believe it or not have nothing to do with safety it mm. was around the old british king's order rules strictly aesthetics how does mm. a boxer present themselves mm. how does a police officer present themselves? how does the military pre present themselves mm. because that's where those rules that's came in funny. and never had anything to do with safety whatsoever and right. so i think that's an important piece and quite often when these things come up mm -hmm have nothing to do with that, but they just don't even know how to first engage it when they first come across it. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's disappointing. For example, in France, it's just crazy out there. In France, <laughs> if you're listening, France. In France, I know you're watching me right I now. could just think about 1914 when Belgium got invaded and Germany was right into France. And who came? People like me, wearing turbans, holding French flags, protecting your land and your constitution. And so vive la France, 
means we did it. And where was your concept of neutrality then? Mm. And now you want to try talking about neutrality right now? If you know your history, then you'll know what the turban represented because it saved you and it protected this constitution that now you're trying to use against us. And Quebec, we're watching you as well. Yes. You're not far away as well because we hear what you're trying to talk about and it won't happen. Anyway, that was our little social justice movement right over here. <laughs> High five, bring it down. We represent. You wanted to know where my activist came from. That's, that's, that's right there. I mean, obviously things are changing. So, for example, this movie coming out is going to create a lot of shift in how we see marginalized folks in sports or being athletes and whatnot. Um, we see so many different campaigns of women that wear hijabs that are in like Nike ads now and whatnot. Hey, it's talk kind of Adidas, of man. Don't talk I Nike know, to me. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But anyway, well, we wait, love wait, wait, Adidas. Wait, 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 Adidas, wait, wait, I'm trying to say something to you. Adidas, if you want to really switch up things, you need to ask this guy right here to make it. Okay, the reason why I love Adidas I also, also fun fact, is because literally my mama here would make us all wear head-to-toe Adidas. To this day, you won't catch me wearing no Nike because I just can't. I no. can't. I'm, and too, in fact, I'm I, too loyal to the brand. And, and you know, I wouldn't even let you in the house. I know. Right? I and wouldn't so, even so let myself so. in my own house. <laughs> Three-stripe <laughs> life. Yes. Three-stripe <laughs> life. No, but, but, but you're right. We have to relatively give credit where credit's due. You know, Colin Kaepernick's advocacy and it's important and can never undermine that piece mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. And some of these challenges are going to continue to present themselves. But I hope that anytime and anybody's watching this, that when you look at these issues, be on the right side of history. That's mm -hmm. all I say. I got a chance to read some interviews that Bram Singh had done okay. um, and how he prepared for the role to mm -hmm. be you. He actually trained with your training. Trainer, yeah, which and is the so boxing gym with yeah. boxing studio. Yeah. Shout out What's the best up? boxing coach in Canada. <laughs> and guess what, Joshua? You're gonna be the best boxer in Canada. And he also watched a lot of your old footage of you and how you used to box, like through your techniques and also just your mannerism. And I think that's really cool to see, like how he really took on that role. Shout out to Bram. You did an excellent job portraying my mom. I would not ever say that to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> what I didn't really appreciate about the film was that you did have other people in this film, but you didn't have roles for your family. He forgot that he had a family. You know, you see me, you see that I am trying to be an actor and trying to make it to Hollywood. He made it to Hollywood before I did, and it's just about a movie about him, but I thought- But remember, I'm a little bit older, Matt, right? So I gotta take the first step and then you come along. Take a chance to just recognize even Brim and Michael. They had actually worked on this screenplay for a long time. They've been planning on doing this since 2010, where they started writing the screenplay. But Brim actually was a fan of yours. There's so much honesty in even like the person that is portraying Brim in this movie. I think it's just well done. There's also big names in this movie. Do you yeah. want to mention? Uh, Mickey Work, mm -hmm. uh, Janelle Parrish. Mm -hmm. You know. It, Tiger's a special moment for us and, mm -hmm. and and I hope that we don't miss the opportunity to engage it and if you're out in Toronto on the 30th and Young and Dundas mm -hmm. or Courtney Park mm -hmm. if you're out in Vancouver downtown uh, it's playing in New York and LA it's playing out there as well the mm -hmm. opening weekend and then we hope you know if it's successful and strong enough then we can continue to expand it out to major other cities mm -hmm. and other countries because mm -hmm. I know a number of people are asking in England and mm -hmm. a few other places for this yeah it has huge potential but it's going to be uh, up to us to make sure that, that we're accountable to our Spread the word on Tiger. Uh, we're going to have a competition as yes, well. Yes, yes. Right? So I want to do a giveaway with my mama here. If you are interested in watching this movie, which you should be by now because we've been talking about it at least for 40 minutes, mm. you could take your mama, you could yeah. take your cha cha. Please tag below, tag them all, and let's see why you want to come and watch this movie. And we might just give you a signed copy of poster, the poster. Sure, I can sign yes. them some posters as well. You can Let sign their faces as well yeah. when you <laughs> see them. I might be in the audience sitting there with you, so just come on out. Oh my god, here we go. Now I'm scared. <laughs> this is the part I'm scared of. Never have I ever broken a bone. <laughs> well, fun fact, y'all. Someone's wearing a cast while we speak. Uh, but imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's my Achilles. This is just six weeks in the cast. Then I got rehab and stuff, so I tore apart my Achilles. But uh, bones, I've broken a lot of bones. I've never broken a bone. Never have I ever snuck out of the house. <laughs> I think I'm st I've snuck out of the house even right now, literally. Because if it's up to our parents and the big snowstorm and stuff like that, <laughs> they probably storm. both don't know what, what's going on down here. So we both snuck out to be here. <laughs> never have I ever had a near-death experience. I have. Oh, yeah. Every day. Us leaving our house again has been a near-death experience. 
Rapid fire round. Show me the perfect punch. Perfect punch or the perfect jab? Because I got Ooh. the pun jab. Ooh. That's a Russell Peter joke back from the days. Respect to Russell Peter, who is also a boxer and trained out of our boxing club, Jamestown. Can you show <laughs> it? The jab? Yeah. Oh my God. Are you ready? I'm so scared. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to punch you. You want to try? Go ahead. You can try. Okay, Throw all the punch you want. Don't worry about it. Yeah. 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 Keep going. How do you want? I don't want to. And then your hands get to be up. Who is your boxing hero? Uh, Ruben Hurricane Carter, Muhammad Ali, uh, Nelson Mandela. And then if you look at just pure boxers themselves, I was a huge fan of Bernard Hopkins. And I had a chance to meet him as well. I had a chance to meet a number of boxers when Muhammad Ali was in Toronto and I had a chance to be there. Uh, Muhammad Ali represent right there. That, that's, that, that's him. Adidas, we want this. Adidas, we want this type of collaboration, okay? Celebrity crush. Really? Oh my God. I in fact put, put her picture up in my locker at university. I used to let everybody know I framed it and stuff like that and I'm trying to remember the name. What? It's not even you don't even know the name. Maybe maybe we'll post it okay, when I remember and I'll tell you who it was. Couldn't right remember here. during the show, right? Yeah, it'll be right over here. There you go. Favorite film or TV show? In Living Color. I love Goodness Gracious Me as well, mm. right? Favorite place you travel to, place you want to visit, and why? A couple of places I probably want to visit, just from our family lineage and stuff like that. Our great grandfather ended up living and passing away in Fiji and stuff, and mm -hmm. so it'd be interesting to, to see what that journey looked like. In Hong Kong as well, because my papa, as I call him, but papa and dad <laughs> and, and uncle had lived in, in Hong Kong. So it'd be interesting to kind of see those kind of journeys because mm -hmm. those are always important parts of, of family history. I just used to call uh, Karen's name. I used to go, get in. And she, she could be anywhere in the house. I could be on the third floor and she could be in the basement. And she heard the sound of my voice calling her name. No one else. She started crying on the spot. Every single time. On the spot. I still cry. You are also a car person. What is your dream car? Or you already have them. I've had them. Impalas, lowriders, 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". You know, the cutty, you can't leave that alone as well. Fell off out. My last album was the chronic. They want to know if he still got it. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Superpower to erase uh, discrimination. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Please watch and support. We never see sick representation in the media. And every time we complain about it, we have our answer right here. Please just support my mama, support his film, support me supporting my mama. This is a lot of support if you really care about us. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode of Jazzic Up with Kerry, make sure you hit the bell notifications to see more things that are coming up soon. And please, of course, like, go and subscribe already, okay? I cannot do this without you. There's a reason why I'm taking a break, all right? Let's be real here, guys.